Christians, in the last 80 years or so, have only been seeing things as bits and pieces. Instead of seeing things which have gradu gradually begun to trouble Christians and others also of goodwill, such as over permissiveness, pornography, the problem of the public schools, the breakdown of the family, abortion, infanticide, the killing of newborn babies, the increased emphasis upon the euthanasia of the old, many, many other things. They have seen these as isolated bits and pieces instead of understanding that the, they are the only, they're the natural outcome of a change from a Christian worldview to a humanistic one. All these things and many more are only the results. We may be troubled with the individual thing, but in reality, we are missing the whole thing if we do not see each of these things and many more as only symptoms of the deeper problem. And that is a change in our society, a change in our country, a change in the Western world, from a Judeo-Christian consensus to a humanistic one. That is, instead of the final reality that exists, being the infinite creator God, instead of that which is the basis of all reality, being such a creator God, now, largely, all else is seen as only material or energy, which has existed forever in some form, shaped into its present complex form only by pure chance. And I want to say to you, those of you who are Christians, or even if you're not a Christian and you're troubled about the direction that our society is going in, that we must not concentrate merely on the bits and pieces, but we must understand that all these dilemmas come on the basis of moving from the Judeo-Christian worldview that the final reality is an infinite personal creator God over into this other reality, which let me re again speak of what it is, and that is the final reality is only energy or material in some mixture of form which has existed forever and which has taken its present shape by ch pure chance. The word humanism should be carefully defined. We should not just use it as a flag, as what I, the younger people might call a buzzword. We must understand what we're talking about when we use the word humanism. Humanism means that man is the measure of all things. Man is the measure of all things. If this other final reality of material or energy, shaped by pure chance, is the final reality, it gives no meaning to life. It gives no value system. It gives no basis for law. And therefore, in this case, Man must be the measure of all things. So humanism, properly defined, in contrast to, let's say, the humanities or humanitarianism, which is something entirely different, and which Christians should be in favor of both of these others. Humanism, being the measure of all things, comes naturally, mathematically, inevitably, certainly, if indeed the final reality is silent about these values, Man must generate him from himself. So humanism is the absolute certain result if we choose this other final reality and say that is what it is. You must realize that when we speak of man being the measure of all things under the humanist label, 
The first thing is the man has only knowledge from himself, that he being finite, limited, uh, very faulty in his observation in many things, yet nevertheless has no possible source of knowledge except what man beginning from himself can find out by his own observation. Specifically, in this view, there is no place for any knowledge from God. But it is not only that man must start from himself in the area of knowledge and learning, but any value system must come arbitrarily from man himself uh, by arbitrary choice. And more frightening still, in our country, at our own moment of history, is the fact that any basis of law then becomes arbitrary, merely certain people making decisions as to what is for the good of society at the given moment. Now this is the real re reason for the breakdown in morals in our country. It's the real reason for the breakdown in values in our country. And it is the reason that our Supreme Court now functions so thoroughly upon the fact of arbitrary law. They have no basis for law that is fixed. Therefore, like the young person who decides to leave, live hedonistically upon their own chosen arbitrary values, society is now doing the same thing legally. A certain few people come together and decide what they arbitrarily believe is for the good of society at the given moment, at the given moment, and that becomes law. The worldview that the final reality is only material or energy shaped by pure chance, inevitably, that's the next word I would bring to you, inevitably, mathematically, with mathematical certainty, brings forth all these other results which are in our country and in our society, which has led to the breakdown in the country, in society, and which are its present sorrows. So if you hold this other worldview, you must realize that it is inevitable that we will come to the very sorrows of relativity and all these other things uh, that, are the, that are so represented in our country at this moment of history. It should be noticed that this new dominant worldview is, the view, is a view which is exactly opposite from that of the founding fathers who founded this country. Now, not all the founding fathers of this country were individually, personally Christians.